Good afternoon. This is Pete Vogel, an elder at First Presbyterian Church. And I'm going to give you the devotion for Thursday. I'm going to start with the word of scripture from Ephesians 4, 14 and 15. Uh, correction, 15 and 16. Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Love, the big word. So what is happening to the good news of our Bible? Why are so few responding to this good news? Let me ponder this point with you for a moment. As an immigrant child, and then growing up here in these United States, it was plain to me that throughout most of history, the affluence of what we have here is very significant affluence. Most of us enjoy luxuries and live like those of royalty during centuries and millennia past. Jesus, his disciples, the documented saints, saints of our past, and missionaries going into third world countries, they all ministered to people who had little or nothing people who were oppressed, people who were exploited. Of course, the gospel had a very strong appeal to them. As I began growing up, my time under socialist oppression was gone. I began to, uh, I began to seek my time as valuable. I wanted to make my mark. I wanted to focus on me. If I felt anything for the problems of others, at best I would think, throw some money at it. But don't bother getting involved. I was taught, and I wanted to be a self-made man. I'd forgotten about other things. A different model, one that I didn't become familiar with until decades later, a model de demonstrated by our Lord and Savior. Jesus went out and loved those with need. He loved them where they were. He loved building relationships. He kept loving until the very end of his earthly life, and he still does. Some people of our current age understood that love. One such man was an individual named Martin Luther King, who read, wrote these words, which ended up as part of the sermon. To our most bitter opponents we say, do to us what you will, and we shall continue to love you. We cannot in all conscience obey your unjust laws because non-cooperation with evil is just as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. Throw us in jail and we shall still love you. Bomb our homes and threaten our children and we shall still love you. Send your hooded perpetrators of violence into our community at midnight and beat us, leaving us half dead, and we shall still love you. But be ye assured that we will wear you down by our capacity to suffer. We shall so appeal to your heart and conscience that we shall win you in the process and our victory will be a double victory. 
The good news is that the love of our Lord did wear us down with his love. He wore us down by being the strength in our suffering. He wore us down by living what he taught. I take two messages from this. One, stop taking the blessings of our affluence for granted. And two, who am I wearing down? Who, for who am I suffering? All the theology, all the liturgy, all the doctrine, or all the religiosity on earth is rather shy of the good news. Going and doing the work of Christ our Lord, that is the good news that lies dormant in every heart until God awakens it. Go awaken someone's heart. Share the gift of love. Let me part with one more scripture. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Pray with me. Lord God, help us see the need for your love in the other. In the name of our Lord, our Savior Jesus. Amen.